Paris, 1905. This was the dawn of a golden age. Among the most prominent figures of this generation was Gertrude Stein, an American author and poet who lived in Paris and worked with many famous artists and writers. She was well known for her wisdom, her sumptuous workplace, and her raging penchant for unconventional thought. Although she specialized in literature, Stein was also a distinguished collector of paintings. She critiqued and purchased art by several famous painters, including Paul Cezanne, Henri Matisse, and of course, Pablo Picasso. Stein admired Picasso, who eventually decided to paint her portrait. But after nearly 90 sittings together, Picasso determined that he could no longer simply see her face. He then left Paris and went to Spain. There he developed extraordinary ideas that would ultimately bring him to his Cubist period. Picasso's experimental style was greatly influenced by African and Iberian works of art. He believed that these styles communicated deeper ideas than those conveyed through more traditional Western artwork. The result was quite an unconventional portrait. It showed the subject staring blankly past the viewer. Her figure was reduced to simple masses, painted with restrained colours. Her face bore a plainer, geometric quality, resembling those of African masks. Her body, however, was round and corpulent. In some ways, of course, the viewers were rather sceptical. What the hell was going on here? Without question, the work was lacking in the kind of detail and individual expression that had characterized most earlier portraits. Furthermore, the sculptural quality of Stein's face left some viewers in a state of complete bewilderment. However, Picasso himself was not intimidated. Miss Stein does not look like her figure in the portrait. She will. Meanwhile, the subject herself was very satisfied with the painting. It went on to spur a new chapter of her literary career, which revolved around the nature of portraiture and representation. Finally, in one of her books, Stein wrote, I was and still am satisfied with my portrait. For me it is I, and it is the only reproduction of me which is always I, for me. For me.